Okay, so disassembly of the W5M33 uh, oil drive transmission as found in first gen EVOs, GSRs, uh, DSMs. Take the exterior bits and pieces off um, your clutch line, your shift assembly. Uh, you've got a detent plug, you've got a bolt for the reverse idler shaft, you've got your reverse light sensor, the three plugs. Uh, with the springs and the poppet balls right in the back pull them out with a screwdriver or something like that uh, What else have we got? I've forgotten something One two One two three That one there will have to come out as well uh, da, 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 da. I think that is everything you'll have to loosen all the bolts off the top case um, you got two very long ones in, on the bottom side. Uh, after you do that, you can lever the top, the end case off here under the drain plug. Uh, there's a small surface you can get in there with a flathead screwdriver. Don't twist the end case too much because you've got dowel pins here and here. There's a tool. So if you do, you'll probably if you twist it too much, you'll you'll crack these off. Right. So once you get that pig of a casing off the top there, um, you've got your viscous coupling, the snap ring, lock ring, whatever you want to call it that holds that on. Uh, your fifth gear set here, your reverse synchro, and the two pain in the ass nuts. So what you have to do to unlock these, obviously you've got to knock out the uh, punched in part, my camera skills are terrible. Um, knock that out, knock that out to allow you to actually turn the nuts. Then you have to lock the transmission in two gears simultaneously. So go ahead and um, select fifth gear, just push it down basically. Um, with the detents out, it'll feel a bit odd moving the shift uh, lever around. So put it in fifth. Then you'll have to knock the roll pin out. Oh, on this one, it's been Focus, you fuck. Uh, on this one, it's been knocked really far in. Um, probably best to knock that out with the transmission in neutral, I think. And that'll line it up. Yeah, so we should be able to knock that pin out with it in neutral. And then with it out, we can manually push the fork down, which will put it in fifth gear. And then we can select another gear uh, for a second third or fourth, whatever, just not fifth or reverse, um, with the shift lever. That'll lock it in two gears simultaneously and stop the shafts from turning. Then you'll be able to take these off with whatever tools you've got, rattle guns preferably. I don't have one, unfortunately. So this is the inside of your end case. Um, you've got a wave spring, which sits on that cone that just presses the synchro off the cone, stops it from sitting against the material and, and wearing away. So that will obviously come out. Don't lose that. Um, you can see it's a little bit worn there. This is 25 years old as a minimum if it's an Evo 3 box like this or whatever. Um, the reverse synchro uh, there. Now this oil guide, don't break it. They're probably not easy to find. Your reverse synchro you can just lift out so you don't lose it. Um, these are a small diameter. They're, they're not very good. Uh, the reason you, you reverse grinds is because when you go to select reverse, there's this isn't actually reverse itself. Reverse is done in the very bottom section uh, with an idler gear and, and some other bits and pieces. This is the brake. This stops the rotation of the entire input shaft um, and clutch disc as it breaks the entire assembly so if you're driving along you hit the brakes and then you try to slam it into reverse you're trying to stop this whole shaft from rotating with one tiny little synchronizer so when you select reverse this end fork pushes out and then that pushes this synchro against the cone built into the end of the casing here and when that's 
pushed against it, it'll lock it. This one still has a little bit of bite to it. If you can push down on it and still twist it, then it's fucked. This is, well, it's probably no better or worse than any other car of equivalent age. This transmission had done apparently 125,000 Ks or so. Let's see if we can get a close up of the gear of the synchro threads. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but they're pretty pretty flattened out by the looks of it. They're not, they should be sharp. Focus. Yeah. Um, the actual little teeth around the outside, they shouldn't really shouldn't really wear at all actually because they're not uh, this is permanently indexed with the slider um, and it has nothing to nothing to hold it uh, basically the slider doesn't impact the teeth on the synchro like it does with every other gear which is why your reverse sleeve this outer piece here focus that's why these never look worn as they will on fifth gear side will be munted they'll be totally destroyed most of the time from people slamming it into fifth but reverse will always look mint um, there's always a question asked of whether you can just flip this the other way flip the sleeve to put the fresh teeth on fifth gear in theory i guess yes um, the mitsubishi training manual for these transmissions says specifically not to do that if i remember correctly so I haven't done it, I haven't tested it, I wouldn't recommend doing it, but some people have said on Facebook and old forum threads that they've done it and haven't had any issues, so if it works for you, cool. Um, I've done the GSR transmission in my Australian built GSR, I didn't flip this, and the fifth gear side is still fucked, but with a fresh synchro, it shifts fine, no, no notching at all. So I don't think it's really that important. You're not slamming it into fifth. You're not slamming it into reverse. Well, normal people don't. So it doesn't matter if the slide is a little bit damaged. So before we take off the viscous coupling, um, this is not a snap ring. If you try and use snap ring pliers, you'll just get angry with all of the lock rings in this transmission. So... Get yourself a set of lock ring pliers. Uh, Nipex make a set 45-21-200 and Wild Tool Group, Wild Tool G409P. I think these just came off Amazon. Uh, these came from, oh shit, can't remember now, but they make these lock rings a piece of cake and they're worth every penny. Let me see if I can do it one-handed. Get that. Assuming I'm using the correct set. Oh, this one looks like a look. That one like that. Now say goodbye to your eyeball. Yep. Okay, one-handed is a bit shit. You don't want to bend these because they come in different thicknesses. Um, so try not to wreck them by stretching them. Ah, come on. Like this. Okay. I've got one side out. The other side's still down. If I force it, it'll bend it and fuck it. I want to get both sides up. Okay. Yep. Basically, get both sides out and then lever the back side with a small flat edge screwdriver. Okay, you do need two hands. Yep. Did not take my eyeball out. Now, once you get this snap ring out, obviously this is going to slide straight off the end of the spline. There is a small ball bearing. Let's see if we can see it just in here, which indexes the inner drive shaft, the output shaft, uh, to the center differential um, spline here. So if you just pull this straight out, straight up, uh, the output shaft will fall out depending on how you've got your transmission supported the output shaft will fall out and the ball bearing will probably drop into the transmission uh, it's a bit of a pain in the ass so lift this out and try and not disturb it too much and you might keep that ball bearing balanced in the cutout in this uh, spline here um, 
it's a bit of a shit of a thing really. If you've got a magnet on a stick or something, you might be able to sort of hold it there while you slide this up, but sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Ah, success. That little one there. Standard viscous coupling, didn't get lucky and find a rally art one. Unfortunately, but that's not surprising. This this gearbox hasn't been disassembled before. Um, it arrived from Japan today, courtesy of DHL. The original silicon and everything hasn't been fucked with, which was the reason I bought it. Okay, so with that dowel pin knocked out, uh, oh, one thing, never put this in reverse once you've got the end case off because this will pop up, uh, especially if you've got the mechanism disconnected, the spring, the balls out, etc. This will all pop out and the keys and springs and shit will, it makes a mess. Um, and definitely don't, once you've got this disconnected, definitely don't yank it up. So go down into fifth gear, that'll put it in fifth. The shafts will still rotate. And then I suppose we'll just go third. So neutral, third. And that will have locked the two shafts together. So now when we undo this, um, the whole transmission is held together, held locked in place by itself. Right, so once you get these two off, you're pretty much inside. So you're going to have to slide the shift fork and the sleeve up and off without losing the upper spring and the three keys. The lower spring you won't be able to access until you knock the, the hub up, which is splined on. Uh, this is also splined on. Be careful. Basically screwdrivers and... You should use a puller if you've got one that'll fit under the teeth. I don't think from memory this wasn't too tight, the last one I had to do, so it wasn't too bad. Um, and then the fifth gear on the input shaft will be on a needle bearing, I think from memory, or... Ah, we'll see when we get there. I can't remember, it's been like two, three years since I did one. So, that's the horrible abomination that I used to undo these two. They're not super duper tight. That's why they're staked uh, on. That's why they hammer them into these uh, grooves. So you should be able to basically knock the stake on out with a chisel and then just hang off it with a really big uh, adjustable or a socket if you've got one. Um, but they shouldn't be too tight. At least the ones I've done haven't been. So surprisingly, the whole thing just lifted off. The, the fork and the slider and springs key everything lifted off together which was a nice surprise that's always good when it works well out like works out well like that now the slider you'll notice for the reverse side focus the teeth are good you don't really have to worry about that they're not going to wear out on you on the fifth gear side this one is pretty good they're still reasonably pointy especially considering it's 25 years old so that's a, a nice result. If these are all banged up, yeah, you can you can kind of get away with just changing out the synchro, but depends how bad they are, really. Um, look at the equivalent wear on the synchronizer and the dog teeth on the gear. So you can see the synchro teeth are still pointy. They have a nice sharp top, and on the gear itself a little bit of wear you see it's just knocked the the tops of the dog teeth off they're a little bit a little bit rounded that's pretty good overall um, if you apply a vertical load to the synchronizer you push down on it um, it breaks the gear to the synchro which is what you want to see if it doesn't then you know that the synchro is fucked it's all like the, the conical surface on the inside here is too worn um, the other thing to check is the clearance between the synchro and the gear. See how there's a, a little gap there? There's a specified value in the service manual for the minimum that should be. Obviously if it's sitting hard up against the... if there's no gap between the two the whole thing's just gonna heat up and eventually fail. It won't go into gear. It'll just lock you out. So, so far doing pretty well. Um, this is probably less than normal wear I'd say for, for the age. So, got pretty lucky with that. The synchro threads, I don't know if it'll focus. A bit of heat discoloration. 
but they look to be sharper than the reverse synchro ones. Probably why it feels better on the gear. Um, this surface here will be polished. Oh, is that blue? Okay, so a bit of, bit of heat in the gear cone there. Yeah, interesting. Focus! Bastard. Alrighty, so this will just lift straight up and off. Same with this. Well, that's loose as hell. And this is just on a needle bearing. So, uh, we'll take the little one off first. Doop. Nice and easy. Pretty boring. Nothing unusual on the teeth. It's all splined together. Nothing too interesting there. Actually, what I do want to do is get some measurements before I disassemble this. The centers, center to center distance and things like that. So I will take those now.